tranquilo. If any of you saw yesterday's live broadcast, then you know things have been a little mad around here lately. Good morning and welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment. This is episode 100. If you can believe that, I can't even believe it. I don't know how we got here so quickly. I guess it's been 100 weekdays because we're trying to do them every weekday. But uh, yeah, this is kind of, uh, kind of unprecedented. This started off as a funny little thing just to see what would happen. I wanted to experiment with it, see where it would go. And it's grown really nicely. I'm actually really, really happy with what's happened and really excited about where it can go. So before we get into today's actual photo moment, I want to tell you guys about what the future of Photo Joseph's photo moment is going to be and potentially can be. So what I've been doing here now, there's zero funding, right? I'm just doing this for the fun of it. But as you might imagine, anything that takes a significant amount of time and effort, at some point, you know, it's got to at least pay for itself. Don't have to make a profit, but at least it's got to pay for itself. So I've been trying to figure out how to do that. You know, you've got obviously my time that goes into it. And some of them, I know what you're saying, some of them, I clearly spend zero time preparing. I just sit down and babble something. But some of them, to be fair, I do put a fair amount of time into. And there are some that I put a lot of time into, and I would like to do more of those. I'd really like to do more of them where I can put a significant amount of time into it. But it's not just my time. You know, I have an assistant here that does a lot of the post-processing part of it. Uh, there's a social media aspect. There's just a lot that goes into it. Uh, and it would be great to yeah, have that at least be paid for. So I've been trying to figure out how to do that. Now, I could solicit advertisers, but that's, I don't know, that's just, eh, it's not what I want to do. I don't want to, you know, photo Joseph's photo moment brought to you by cleansing soap. Kind of, it's just not me. And turns out there's this thing I had, I'd heard about and I looked into it a bit called Patreon. Now, if you're not familiar with Patreon, the idea behind Patreon is people like me, just lone wolf artists who are doing some cool, funky thing, who need funding, can ask you, the audience, for funding. And you can choose to fund it or not. And it's completely up to you. And the idea behind Patreon is that you can contribute any tier. And there's a whole bunch of tiers that you can contribute, starting from very little, like five bucks a month, up to more than that. And if you feel that what I'm doing is worthwhile, if you want it to continue as it is, or if you want to see it actually grow, and you're benefiting from it, then you can contribute money. And if you don't want to, that's perfectly fine too. Uh, at some point, you know, it's, hopefully I can get enough to at least break even so I can continue doing it. But hopefully, even better than that, we can get more and we can get a lot more going out of the photo moments. And that's where I would love to take this. So I've set up a Patreon page, patreon.com slash photojoseph. And don't go there right now, just keep watching this, but go there at the end. And you'll see all the different tiers and, and what I'm offering and what I want to achieve with it. I have some pretty, let's say lofty goals. I don't know if it's a goal, it's more like a pipe dream in the sky of the kind of things that I could do if there was enough funding coming in, if you guys really wanted this sort of thing. And part of the beauty of it is that you can help mold the direction of it. So if you tell me, you know, what I really want to see is this and there's funding for it, I can do that. So enough of that. That's the whole thing. That's how this is going to move forward. Funding through Patreon. Hopefully we can make that work and that can make Photo Joseph's Photo Moments continue on for another 100, another 500, another 1,000 episodes. Because I'm having a lot of fun doing this. I know a lot of you are enjoying it and hopefully it's worth popping in a few shekels to, to keep this thing going. All right, so enough of that pitch. Let's get on with today's photo moment. So the idea behind today's photo moment is looking through the lens to see what different lenses, what effect different lenses have on a portrait. So I have my friend Brooke here who's going to come and step down, sit, uh, sit down here in just a moment. And we're going to be looking through this camera as I change lenses and get different experiences with different lenses. And you can see exactly the kind of change that happens. Sound like fun? Let's get on with it. So Brooke, if you could come on over here and have a seat, please. So everybody, this is Brooke. Brooke, uh, tell, we didn't really get a chance to go through this. So I'm going to come into your very narrow field of view. Uh, you are a recent graduate with a degree in? Environmental Economics and Policy. Environmental Economics and Policy. OK. And you're looking for a real job. A real job. A yes. real job. And what is a real job? Um, I'd love to do something in food policy research and food systems. OK. Yeah. If you do anything in food policy research and food systems, and you know what that is, I have no idea. But if, that's, <laughs> like, if you know what that is, or you know somebody, Brooke is looking for work. And she lives here in Ashland, but are you willing to relocate? 100%. 100% willing to relocate. Excellent. So if you're looking for someone like her, then pop a comment in the comments on either Facebook or on YouTube, and I'll get the message to her. Thanks, guys. OK. So let's see here. Let's start. Um, Ellen, why don't you go and switch to the wide shot here for a moment. So I've got my camera set up here on the tripod so I can easily move this back and forth as I go through different lenses. So the lens that's on here now, what you've just been seeing me on, and Brooke for a moment there, 
is a, is, it's kind of a funky lens. It's, um, it's not, a, it's, so this is my Lumix GH4, and the lens that was on there is len, a lens made by a Chinese company called uh, Zhongyi, Zhongyi Optics, I think, and it's a 25 millimeter, so a 50 millimeter equivalent, f0.95. It's insanely shallow depth of field. That's why the video looked the way it did, and if I moved at all, I probably drifted out of focus, but you know, whatever. So that's where we were starting. But I'm going to rip that lens off, and we're going to go through a lineup of lenses. And what I've got here is the lenses I want to play with. So we're going to start wide and go to telephoto. And the whole idea here is we want to see what these different lenses look like. So we're going to start with a 7 to 14 millimeter zoom. So that's the equivalent of 14 to 28. You would never shoot a portrait with this lens, but we're going to look through the lens and see what it looks like anyway, because that's kind of cool. And then, let's see here. Um, I guess we'll go to the 15. The 15 will be the same as the 14, but it's a little bit of different distortion. So we'll go to the straight 15, which is a 30 mil equivalent. And then we're going to go to a dedicated portrait lens. Actually, I think at that point we'll go back to the 50, the one that's on there now, because it's a 25, so 50 equivalent. So we'll go from the 7 to 14 to the 15 to the 25. And then we're going to go to the 42 and a half. This is the Noctocron. This is like the portrait lens. If you're going to shoot portraits for a living, then you're shooting Lumix, this is the lens to have. It is gorgeous, and you will see that momentarily. So we'll put that on there. And then we're going to put a long lens on, a telephoto zoom. This is a 35 to 100, so that's a 70 to 200 millimeter equivalent, f2.8 lens. And it's going to be really interesting to see how it affects the compression of the scene, how it affects the structure of the face, and just overall how it completely makes for a different shot. So we're going to go through the whole lineup here. So we're going to start, as I said, with the really wide lens. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll just swap lenses out here. And each time I put one on, I'm going to have to play with the exposure to get that right. And of course, move the camera forward and backward to get it into place. But that is the whole objective. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look through the lens. We are now seeing Brooke with a super wide lens. Clearly, if we're doing a portrait, we're way too far away. So let's move this up close and move this up close. And this is not, I'm going to point out, going to be a flattering <laughs> position for the camera. This is definitely not how you would normally shoot a portrait. So you can see at this point, her, I can't really fill the frame with her face. Let me get this even closer. Sorry, Brooke, and we're getting really up close and personal here. This is not going to be your favorite shot from the day. I can promise you that. So you can see I am, what, I am a foot and a half away from her. Uh, we are filling, not filling the frame with her face, and there's a massive amount of back. I mean, look at this, this background here. We've got the ladder over here. There's actually cables that are hanging off of the camera getting in the shot. Super wide. So definitely not an ideal portrait lens. Now, with the same lens, if I zoom into the 14 millimeter and pull back a little bit to get that same rough framing of her face, you can see already it's dramatically improved. Right At this point now, her face is looking a bit better, and the background is not as wide. But obviously, this background is still way, way too much a part of the scene. So let's see, the aperture right now, and in fact, let me, let me just change something in my camera real quick so that you can see. I want you to be able to see the menu settings that I'm looking at. And where is that? I always forget where that is. Here we go. Um, info display on. All right, there we go. So now you should be able to see exactly what I'm saying on the back of the camera. So you've, you can see the crosshairs focusing on her face. You can see that I'm in an aperture of f4. And you can see that basically everything is in focus. Now, really not an ideal situation. In fact, let's go ahead and just take a, a picture there. Um, so I have that for posterity for later. OK. so. Not ideal. All right, so now let's go to a little bit longer lens. We're going to go to that 15, which is really not going to be that much different than this. But because it is not this uh, a spherical lens, we might actually see a little bit more distortion going on. But let's see what we've got. So here we are, zoomed in. You know, without a side by side, it's kind of hard to tell if it's any different. But again, clearly 15, not an ideal portrait lens. Now, that said, the 15 as a not ideal portrait lens is a fabulous street photography lens. The 30 millimeter range, if you're shooting street photography, some photographers prefer something a little wider, let's say around the 24, 28 millimeter. Uh, some prefer something more closer to 50, and I'm talking equivalents here, more like 50. Personally, I think the 30 to 35, so right in the middle of those two, is ideal street photography lens. Obviously, it's totally up to you. It's just what you like. I like that focal length, and I find that the, the 15 mil that's on here right now is the 15 mil Leica F1.7 lens for Lumix is, mm, is a perfect street photography lens. But street photography lenses, I'm not getting up into people's faces. I'm back a little bit getting this, the scene of the street. Okay, so now let's go back to the 50. So we've seen a 7, 14, 15. Now we're going to go to a 50 millimeter equivalent. That's the 25 millimeter lens. Let's pop this guy on. 
And let's see here, get this guy off of there. And so we're going back to the lens that we started with. Now again, very specialized lens. Let's pull back a bit. So we're gonna get her face into the right range. Now you can really see that shallow depth of field, but again, that is that f.95 lens. It's kind of, kind of ridiculous and not an ideal lens for any kind of um, action because this is a totally manual lens, but it does give you this beautiful bokeh look. Now, look at the background here. You can see a lot less of the background. We are definitely getting a bit more compression in here, and, and I'm gonna explain compression in just a moment for anyone who's not familiar with what I'm talking about. Uh, you can see your face is relatively the same size to what we had before, but the background is not only more out of focus, but we're seeing less of it. So, okay, let me, let me explain the idea of compression. If you've got a uh, wide lens, I'm gonna use my arms here to illustrate. I should've got a whiteboard for this, but you know, didn't think of that. If I've got a wide angle lens, it's like, it's like this. Like here's the camera, here's the subject. It's like a really wide field of view. So by the time I get the subject close enough to the lens to fill the frame or whatever I'm trying to do, I've got a massive amount of space in the background that's being seen as well. As you get to a longer or more telephoto lens, that field of view gets narrower, narrower, narrower. And so you see less and less of the background. So that's what we're seeing already in here. The act of something called compression, it's, it's this visual appearance where everything tends to get compressed back. So the things that are farther away don't look quite as far away. And it's just the nature of having that longer lens. So the longer lens we get on there, the more telephoto lens we have on there, we're going to see less and less of the background and what's in the background is going to look closer. That's basically what compression is. Okay, all right, so now let's switch over to the portrait lens. So this is the Noctocron, the 42 and a half millimeter. This is the perfect portrait lens if you are shooting portraits. This is gonna allow us to get a bit farther back and have very shallow depth of field because this is an f1.2 lens. All right, so let's fire that up. So now you can see, let's, go, let's focus on her. And there we go. So I clearly need to zoom or pull back a little bit. And uh, Ellen, you're gonna have to tell me next time you switch to me, I might be getting too close to the other camera, so I might be out of focus. I'll have to go reset that. Um, so, okay, now, now take a look at the background. We're seeing very little of the background there. It is really starting to pull together into something very, very nice. The background is largely gone. It is completely out of focus because of this crazy wide lens. But uh, more importantly, her face is taking on a much more pleasing shape with this type of lens. Uh, a big wide lens is not ideal for portraits for lots of reasons. One of them is the distortion that it puts on people's faces. A longer lens is going to look nicer, and this already looks much, much nicer. This is a much prettier image that we're getting of Brooke here. Okay, so that's that lens. Now we're gonna go even longer. So now let's go up to the really long lens. Let's go to that 70 to 200 mil equivalent. So again, this is in the world of micro four thirds, a 35 to 100. And this will, of course, give us the zoom range. So we're gonna start at 35, which will be a 70 mil equivalent, which will be a little bit wider than what we started with on there, uh, we had on the previous lens. And then we're gonna go all the way, and I'm gonna have to move back next to the camera that you're looking at now to see this. Okay, let's look back through my camera again. We're gonna go to 35, so I can get a little bit closer to get that same framing on her face. And so there you see we're getting a little bit more of the background than we had before, because we've gone a little bit wider. But now, let's, I'm gonna go in steps. Let's take this up to 100 millimeter equivalent and pull back a little bit. Cool, and now let's go up to a 140 millimeter equivalent, pull back a little bit. You see how the background is changing there? See how much less of the background we're getting? And let's go to 100 and go, so that's a 200 mil equivalent. And now look at how little of the background we're seeing. In fact, I'm, I need to actually go farther because I've got her face is bigger than it was before, so let's pull back even more. Perfect, look at that. So that is a 200 millimeter equivalent lens. And there's no stopping this. I and mean, you can put on a 400 mil, an 800 mil equivalent, get really far away and get incredible compression for those portraits. And that is the difference between all these different lenses. So that's what we're getting here. By taking these different lenses and putting them on for the same situation, a portrait, and trying to position the person's face the same size, you see a massive difference in the background. You're also gonna see a difference in the, the amount of what's in focus in the background, the depth of field. Now, one of the depth of field kind of tricks here is if you don't have a really fast lens, like the, the lens that's on there now is a 35 to 100 f2.8, so 70 to 200 equivalent f2.8 lens. That's fast, that's a nice shallow depth of field. But let's say that you've got a 70 to 200 f4 lens. You still want that shallow depth of field, right? 
Well, the closer you are to the subject and the farther the background is away from the subject and you, the more depth of field, the more shallow, sorry, the shallower the depth of field is going to appear, the more out of focus that background is going to be. So even if you don't have a really fast lens, get as close as you can to the subject to get the framing that you want and put the background as far away as physically possible. And that is going to give you that closer distance to the camera and farther distance to the background. And you're gonna have the, the basically the results of a shallower depth of field lens. That's how, basically how that works. So that's it. That's, that's what I wanted to show you guys today. Um, I'm not watching the comments. Ellen, you're watching. Are there any comments? Great comments that all say congratulations on 100 photos. Well, I thank you for the congratulations on 100. I can't believe we're here today. All right, so uh, I guess no questions today then, so that's a, a pretty easy wrap on there. Of course, if you have any questions afterwards, you know what to do, stick them in the comments. Uh, you can head over to YouTube later to see a, a edited version of this, um, and that's that. And again, thank you for watching, thank you for being a part of this ride, and head over to patreon.com slash photojoseph. Help make this thing a long-term reality for me and for you, and I think that uh, if we do, if we can really make this come together, we're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna do something really cool. So that's it, folks. Thanks a bunch. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow for episode number 101. Um, I think I'm gonna go back to something that I already showed you that I've been using quite a bit and tell you what I thought of it. How's that for a teaser? See you guys next time. Bye-bye.